had a vision of being a millionaire. So now that I'm a millionaire, now I'm trying to die. I'm making myself have a vision to be a hundred millionaire. Life gives to the givers, takes from the takers, and has a very accurate accounting system. Where does the stress come from? Why wouldn't you want to tap into that knowledge? I think I disagree there too with Joe Budden. There are, oh, you got to give me respect. Listen, if you got to tell somebody you're a leader, you got to tell somebody to respect you, that means you haven't earned it. Because I could be on stage about to pass out and I could just put my foot in my head like prison. I could just get a whole new boost of energy. So I hope little baby is surrounding himself with men and leaders that help cast him a vision. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Cipolli here. Hey, Lancio from Dallas, Texas, and we got another reaction video for you today. This time around, it's a interview being done by Joe Budden, and he's interviewing Lil Baby. Uh, one of the funniest things I realized is I'm doing these reaction videos to these uh, pop star celebrities, uh, in this case, hip hop artists, is that I'm realizing that these kids could be my son. <laughs> my son just turned 27 years old. I love you, handsome. Happy birthday, Ruben Sapala. He's out there in Denver right now, making his way. He's in the mixed martial arts game out there in Denver. Wishing you much love. Happy birthday to my son. But little baby's around the same age, about 27 uh, uh, years old. And um, a lot of these rappers, artists, are dealing with a lot of fame, fortune, success. The world is opening to the, it's been an oyster for them. They're just opening up a lot of blessings their way. And how they handle fame and how they handle success, and how they handle their money is a lot of what I'm reacting to from a faith-based perspective. And if my YouTube channel can help you think like a millionaire, strategize, so therefore you can become a first-generation cash flow millionaire, it's about building a basis, a foundation of morals, values, and principles that you can build on your success, your career, your business, your finances, to make sure it lasts for the long term. And so uh, let's take a look at this Interview Joe Budden and Lil Baby. Let's check this out. Just now, when you say youngins, just so I'm clear, how old are these people you talking about? 14, 15. <laughs> like 14 to oh, yeah. my age. Okay, so Lil, I think Lil Baby's like 20, he's 27 years old or something like that. But the new generation of hip hop artists, because of the benefit and gift of social media, a lot of them are being exposed to this life of success, fame, fortune through art entertainment and a lot of these guys are coming up they're being groomed at a much younger age you know when uh we were backstage with kobe bryant i asked kobe listen how did you learn so much about michael's moves he says i studied michael i went back to the nba hall of fame i went to all the videotapes cassette tapes every game of the nba is recorded and kobe bryant went back there and he watched these players bah, 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 bah. He studied tape watched michael jordan which fast forward to today any player can study michael jordan's moves any player today in sixth, seventh, eighth grade can study the moves of Kobe Bryant. Anybody right now can get access to information to help you become a better person, endeavor, whatever career or business that you're in. So therefore, there is no excuse for you not to be financially free. If you're looking at this channel because you want money, you want, you want to get money, you want to get big money, so therefore you can do the things that you want to do and accomplish, there's zero excuse today for you to not have access to the greatest free library in the history of humankind, which is YouTube, and now this guy's mentoring kids, 14, 15 years old. Get out of here. But that's what he's doing. God. Yeah, that's, <laughs> why, that's where Atlanta is up on us. That's where y'all got us at. Because there really is, y'all keep the chains flowing on the generation cycle. Yeah. Right. Like, I'm trying. Exactly. Like, I don't, up here, older, older dudes are not just cuffing up the 13-year-olds, I don't think. They scared them. Like, why would I think? But I'm one of them. So how can I not? What I'm gonna do with the money or with the knowledge or whatever I got going Good on. I ain't man. running around with no old niggas. That shit dead. Like, I ain't trying to do that. Yeah. And, and, and why people don't run around with young dudes because they like roguish. They ain't got yeah. no respect. They like whatever. I stay far away from the young dudes. You feel me? But no value on they life. They people too though. You know what I'm saying? And they'll value life if you give them life. They don't got no life to value. You know what I'm saying? Okay, know okay, so, like, like. so, okay, this is pretty interesting. So, Lil Baby said that the old generation doesn't want to be around the younger generation, which I think what Joe Budden's after. I stay away from young, young guys. So, he's actually, there, there's two different varying uh, points here. It's actually both. You know, I, I'm, you know, very disappointed that humankind, at least people here in America, don't talk to the older generation. 
You're talking to people that live their life. They're 50, 60, 70, 80 years old. Why wouldn't you want to tap into that knowledge? Now, here's a challenge too with older people. Their inability to adapt to the younger generation in this current time. But I think if two generations help each other out, uh, I remember a scripture in Leviticus where actually the older pastors, the older worship leaders in, in Leviticus were actually required to step down from their posts, to step down from the pulpits and coach up the younger generation. So there's really two, the younger generation look up to the older generation, so therefore they can accelerate their goals, plans, and dreams faster. And the old generation, it was inspired to them, is required by them to bless the next generation, so therefore they can continue on the work. I think if everybody forgets about having to do a lot of work, so therefore they can take all the credit, but plug into the purpose, the goal of having a greater vision or purpose bigger than yourself. You're tied to a movement. You're tied to pushing forward a positive uh, and uplifting and encouraging agenda that doesn't uh, keep people down. I think that's something that I think everybody can rally behind. Young dudes. You see But no value on make life. people too, though. You know what I'm saying? I think I disagree there too with Joe Budden. There is some value in life because, I've listen, I remember my... My kids, I've got a new preteen years old. Uh, again, happy birthday to my another son, Jojo Sapal. He just turned 12 years old. I got a preteen now. So I got kids at 27 years old. I got a kid that's 20, 12 years old. Later on, we'll be going to the gym later on. You got to be around the younger generation, man. I remember leaving uh, leaving uh, my house and going to the gym. Next thing you know, I get surrounded by my car with a bunch of 12, 13, 14 years old. And I salute you guys for watching my YouTube channel. I say, hey, are you the money smart guy? I say, yes, I am. I said, yeah, we're subscribers to the Seven Figures. So I said, what are you doing watching an old guy's channel? And I said, well, well, sir, we wanna make money too. We wanna be inspired and know what to do when we get older to make a lot of money. They're watching the channel. They're 12, 13, and 14 years old as I was going to the gym, the shroud of my truck. And so every generation has something beneficial to deliver. Listen, my social media team, I'm, I'm 40 some years old. I have zero clue about how TikTok, IG, and all this stuff works. I just know that I have a message, so therefore I hire and employ a younger generation to help me cast and bring and deliver my message. There's multiple benefits for every generation if we're willing to tap into the talents of each other and stop worrying about our position or, or oh, you gotta give me respect. Listen, if you gotta tell somebody you're a leader, you gotta tell somebody to respect you, that means you haven't earned it. And sure, you can come in around and, and bully yourself and demand it, but listen, my in my book, I'd rather you come into a room because you've earned respect, not because you demand it. It's better to be loved than feared. It's better to be loved than feared in my book. I know on the streets, though, it's better to be feared. Different story. It depends on what you want to do. It depends on who you want to become. I'd rather be loved because, therefore, when I'm dead and buried in the ground, people will still remember my life's work. When you're feared, when you're dead and buried in the ground, people are celebrating. Thank God the guy's dead and buried. I don't got to worry about this guy no more. But if you're loved, people want to remember you and honor you for the legacy and the difference you made in the world. How much, because I heard you say you got a shorter sentence earlier, how much time would you supposed to do versus what you did? Probably like five years, I did two years. Dope. Something like that. Two years straight. Yeah, yeah, like young age. So that, that and I think that helped me with a lot of this too, like far as rapping, like. Cause I could be on stage about to pass out and I could just put my foot in my head like prison. What I'm getting for this show, man, mm -hmm. prison. And like, I could just get a whole new boost of energy. Mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, he'd rather be doing a show than being in prison. Let that be a lesson to those who are younger and want to be wise. But I had a vision for this. Now I'm trying to, I'm making myself get a vision. Like, like, I just want some more money now. Like, I had a vision of being a millionaire. Mm -hmm. So now that I'm a millionaire, now I'm trying to, I, I'm making myself have a vision to be a hundred millionaire. But by, by the way, in Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18, it reads like this. Without vision, my people perish. So your vision's gotta be more than just money. Your vision's gotta be more than just status, a job title, a career, a career move, uh, uh, just starting a business. Your vision's gotta be more than that because Here's what I know, at least here in the great country of the United States of America. That's why millions of people are coming here if you want to come from their country to move to this great country. Is that here? You can make a lot of money. Yeah, you can say what you want to say, but oh, I can't do this, I can't do that. And by the way, the biggest recruiters and biggest megaphone right now is to the people who are victim complainers. I can't do this, I can't do that. Well, vice versa, man. So if you think that your vision is tied to money, great. In my opinion, there's four phases of income. Number one is survival. Once you get past survival phase, now it's status. Once you get past status, now it's freedom. After freedom, now it's purpose. So I hope 
little baby is surrounding himself with men and leaders that help cast him a vision. This guy will fail again. This guy will fail. Mark my words, as I said, my prediction, if he fails to surround himself with the right counselors, with the right leaders that are helping usher him to the next generation, and he is coachable enough, adaptable enough, where it's not about pride and ego, which you have to be careful of when you get to this certain level of success, when you're the first millionaire in your entire family, the first person in your city, your state, that's ever, in your neighborhood that's ever done something of any significance, you could be you gotta be careful to make sure pride and ego don't get the best of you. And you stay humble and you stay hungry. Let's see if Lil Baby was able to do that. And I'm like generous with it. Like, I ain't tripping. I spend more money on them than I just spent on myself. Good. My mama got Tells a house. Me about his my values. Just got a house. My aunt don't got cars. Like everything. Paid. Listen, how you spend your money, how you treat your money, tells me and tells everybody about what you value and what you prioritize. So then, where does the where does the so where does the stress come from? Because there has to be some type of stress with this, with this lifestyle. Right, it can't day, just be all peaches every, and cream. Every day is like different little knickknacks. Like, like, Even the way, way he just referred to stress as a knickknack. Because <laughs> it ain't, it ain't well, what I just named. That was disgrace. That was the real shit. Yeah. My mama and them having them somewhere to stay. Your baby mama and them, your kid. I got all that straight. If everything started today, we good. So one baby mama. I got two baby mamas, so goddamn like, but if everything stopped today, I'm good. Yeah, that, that's stressful in itself too as well. So, uh, you know, he t mentioned knickknacks, you know, uh, think about making money and, and buying multiple homes or paying off things and acquiring a lot of things, a lot, a lot of assets, which is good. The knickknacks are the day-to-day -day maintenance of it. You know, one of the most annoying things that I experienced in my life when so I bought a couple of exotics, a couple of Rolls Royce, you know, a couple, you know, the type of luxury cars is that you just can't treat that car like a normal Chevy or a Ford or, uh, or a Honda. You got to keep the thing constantly clean. You got to keep the con thing constantly, you know, pristine because, you know, you just can't have one of these luxury cars, exotic cars, you know, having mud and dirt and you know, dust all over it. You got to keep it pristine because it's the maintenance of it. You have a big house, you got to have it, uh, the, the lawn mode, you got to have the landscaping on point because there's a maintenance of it. And the benefit of that is you uh, also create jobs by doing so. So, uh, you know, more power to little baby here having knickknacks. Uh, I'm like to see here what he says about having two baby moms. Let's go. So, and you can't stress that much. Like, but these different tr trials and tribulations every day I had to go through, like, Beefing with one of my, but anything I'm going through that's stressful, I can eliminate. With? Like, honestly. Eliminate with right what? Now. Like, some shit I can't, like, my brother was, was in jail, like, he, get out, he got out of jail. It's different, little, like. Come on, little baby, tell me how you eliminate. We want to know how you eliminate problems. Every, that's what I'm saying, like, I got shit going on in the streets. Like, these bros and D. But I know for a fact, if I turn my back on the bros and shit, I won't have none of that problem. Mm -hmm. Like, you feel me? Like, mm -hmm. if I say fuck everybody, I'd probably be stress free. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's the stress about? Like, but I feel like that's why I got the money. I, I, to do I got a line in my song say, it seems like I got money <clears throat> to please everybody else. Like, I'm damn near one of them stages. It don't even be about me. I know. I just, everybody else almost. Okay, so one of, one of the things about making money is you come up in your rise. And this may pertain to somebody who becomes a lawyer, somebody who becomes a doctor, somebody who starts a business. Now you're rolling in with some cash. I got three, four, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000. We've got a person here that we recruited into our business. She and her husband, she's a brain surgeon. Uh, she's making three fifty, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000 a year. Uh, we got people that we've recruited into uh, mortgages that 80% of the business no longer refinances and they have to find a different way to make money. So therefore getting insurance license to complement their mortgage business is something that can help recoup the 80% drop in revenue from no longer doing consistent refinances. So you, the thing is you have to manage your finances and you manage the relationships and the expectations they have when you start making money. You gotta have a system and a process so therefore you have an honest conversation to manage the expectations and tell people, listen, just because I'm doing my thing, doing my grind, doesn't entitle you to my finances. Don't feel entitled for you to ask me for money. Don't feel entitled that I should give you this, I should give you that. And I think if more people, as they rise in their cash flow and their income, if they're willing to have that conversation to manage expectations, you will relieve yourself of a lot of stress. So 
Matt, what happens? Somebody said, Matt, I need 10 grand from you. For example, I had a family member that I barely said hello to in the last 10, 15 years, barely comments on any of my social media posts, barely gives me a phone call. But next thing you know, he wants $10,000 from me to start a new business. So I can't give you 10,000 to start a new business, bro. And then what, the only time you hit me up is when you need money. Where were you when I needed clients? Where were you when I needed to spread the word? Where were you when I needed you to support my event? Where were you, where were you? But now that I have money, now there you are. I'm sorry, bro. I can't, I can't honor that. I can't respect it. But if you want to get down, let's, let's get rolling. From here going forward, I have a solution for you to then start putting your hand in my pocket. But until then, it's a superficial thing. You're just using me as an ATM. And what, what credit score do you have with me? Forget the FICA score, Equifax Trans, TransUnion, but what type of moral credit score do you have with me to tell me you're actually going to pay the money back? I haven't seen you grow in your career. I haven't seen you do this. Now that uh, somebody like me potentially can say yes to you, all the banks turned you down, but now you come to me, now you think that I'm all making them say yes because we just share, share the same last name? No, that's just not the way it works. But here going forward, here's how you can ask me for money. See? So that's how you manage expectations. Therefore, your money isn't just to be supporting everybody else. No, that's wrong. Your money is your money. You've been gifted. You've been given that money. You've been given this business, this career, this status, this celebrity, this opportunity. Take care of it. Handle it. Manage it. Otherwise, you have a lot of leaks that end up creating a lot of unnecessary stress. No, that's that's normal. That's, that's normal at first. Right. I guess it'd be later on in, in dudes' careers where, like, like, I be talking to dudes in, in my age range, and when they hit, like, 39 and 40, like, we miss, maybe we missed our kids' first steps and yeah. the first yeah, words because we were running right. around and exactly. shit like that. So I'm we try to make to up for the time that we that we just gave it to everybody else. I'm trying to still trying to play them, though. You're like, trying to play both. Yeah, I'm trying to make sure I beat them first step. You ain't going to be able to do it. You all over the place. You're too hot. Yeah, that's it's not possible. That's what people don't understand. I'm still making it work. Like, oh, you got understanding, like, baby moms. Hell, nah, nah, not really. But they ain't gonna have no trouble but understanding. I got understanding kids though. Like my little boy, four, he'll be five, so he understand them emotion. My my newer baby mama, she don't really understand yet. Like, like, but she will though. By the way, that's what you got. <laughs> I've said this over and over and over again, man. Be careful of who you have sex with, man. Be careful who you set your eyes on and be careful who you lust after because you just might end up having a kid. And if 80, 90% of your attraction to them is because how they look and how they make you feel and this, this, and then what they do for you and boom, you have a kid, guess what you got to do? You got to deal with that person for the rest of your life. Not just eight, up to 18 years old. You got to deal with that person for the rest of your life. You think that kid is going to forget their mom just because you, you know, they turned 18? No, you still have to deal with the influence of that family, that mom, that family that is not around you, even though you completely separate it out. You still got to deal with the other variable, the conversation. They might be in their ear more than you think. And your guys, your coaching, your money might be going to them and you think they're spending it right, but they got the wrong counsel in there because they listen to the mother more easier than you because you're the hardcore disciplined father. You're the capitalistic father. You're the father that holds rules and status uh, and standards to the highest uh, level. You're annoying to them. What's the easiest path to follow is another area of engagement in growing up that has less stress. And usually sometimes if it's, it's not you, then it's the other person. So you become annoying if you decide to have high standards in your life. So therefore, the kids will naturally listen to who? The one that doesn't necessarily have high standards. So it's so important, important that we get back to this society where we're having children with women that we want to marry, that we have married. And the design of family is this. It's just not supposed to be mom and dad. It's supposed to be grandma and grandpa. The structure that God intended is to have not only mom and dad, but grandma and grandpa based on the same values and prison. Why do you think people back in the day had arranged marriages? Why do you think people married into the right family last names? It's because there's a benefit of that marriage coming outside of just sex. You're doing life together. You coming together actually multiplies not only financially, but also the people that you are involved with. So people think they're just having sex and casual sex. And they say, oh, I'll just be a single mom, single dad. You know what? That might exist temporarily, you're right, but long-term, guess who suffers? Those children. Those children are robbed of the benefit of having both mom and dad 
raising them both on the same page, both on the same discipline, uh, benefits, e excitement for their for, uh, for their for the next steps in their life. Besides having to worry about two different rules, two different houses, very stressful for the kid. It's stressful on you as a parent if you're a single mom, single dad. I, by the way, I know all this because I've had three kids and two baby moms. I'm married now, and we've got two kids there, so we have a blended family of five. So I'm not talking for a position of judgment. I'm talking for a position of experience and counsel and groups of other people in blended family type of situations. So consider that when you are having relationships with somebody, you want to sleep with somebody, who knows, you just might have sex with them. And next thing you know, you got stress unnecessarily for the rest of your life. Not to just 18 years old, but for the rest of your life. Listen, how old your youngest? Well, he just turned one yesterday. Mm. So like she, and she only 21. Mm. I said, so she don't really understand. A lot she don't understand. Yeah, but it's your button knows. It work out though. Cause I, cause I, I go home every time. Like, if I got a show Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I go home. And mm. I'm like, every day. When I could be flying to the next state mm -hmm. and not come home. Good, he's, he's, you know he's finding a way to make it work. Home. Like, I will catch two flights that day. Catch a flight early in the morning. Go back to Atlanta and leave again, probably five, six o'clock. Uh, by the way, so you know, everybody he's, he's talking about catching commercial flights. So just because you're a hip hop celebrity and artist like that, and all the fame and fortune coming his way, he's not flying private jet. He's flying commercial. Is what he's talking about, which is fine. Just because you are a celebrity doesn't mean you blow all this money on private jets and et cetera, et cetera. You find the most economical way, the fastest way, to get what you need to get done. You know, this whole thing about uh, dogging people out just because you're not flying private. Well, hey, listen, economically making sense is the first thing. Does it fit within your budget? Because you just don't want to blow off your profits just because you got to flex. Jesus, man. So like, wait, a person, I, I've been doing it from the jump, so. <laughs> I wonder what Joe Budden is thinking right now, man. He's just like, Ooh, what a life you're living. Just the look on his face, the frown in his forehead, just for him just looking at little baby that way. By the way, I wonder why little baby isn't sitting in a position where he's facing Joe Budden. Joe Budden is facing him, the physiology of it all. I mean, he's really paying attention to what little baby has to say. I don't know why little baby's got his side to him. You know, usually that's a tell about the engagement or conversation that's happening. Person probably so don't even appreciate it. Yeah. Because I could stay gone and like, it'd be less on me. Taking all these flights, I had to go, yeah, I got to see the traffic, go back home, I get back up and come back. I could have just slept on the plane, went back to my hotel, slept in my hotel. Went to my next show and said, um, "Wait, that's the responsibility you got to do now when you uh, when you like are you father." Do a lot of the alleviating of stress for people. Right, that's what alleviate my stress. The gift of giving. Right, that's the. I be telling people that shit feel better than yeah. anything. That's awesome. Me buying one of my partners' that's outfit a, feel better than me buying. Life gives to the givers, takes from the takers, and has a very accurate accounting system. So as I'm getting to know little baby, getting to know how he manages his life and his finances, you know, more power to you, brother. Me mm -hmm. outfit, like, I really get a, that's the feel that I'm getting with the money. Like, I'm happy. When I buy somebody else something, man, I don't even care about buying me, man. Like, and maybe that seemed why, maybe that's why it seemed like you don't have all, the, all the, these haters, too. I ain't met too many dudes that hate on you. Well, good. Well, there you have it. So... I want to know what your thoughts, your questions are. Uh, you know, my, um, my, my complete takeaway from just this brief uh, episode is, listen, if you want to accelerate and improve your life, you know, you're going to face a lot of things. When you face, you know, the survivability phase, the status phase, the freedom phase, and then the purpose phase, you know, you're going to go through all four phases. The question is, how big are you thinking? And right now, nobody knows. Nobody knows right now. You're watching this episode right now. I don't want to know if you're watching it right away or a year from now, or two years from now, or 10 years from now. Nobody knows how big you're thinking. So when you're looking at the vision you got for your life, I hope it's more than just finances. Here's the coolest part. You will make money. You will be able to pay your bills. You'll be able to rise above. Question for you is, what do you prioritize after that? Do you live off your current situation or do you want to reinvest so therefore you can feed the machine and expand your growth, expand your horizon, expand your enterprise. The question is, how big are you thinking? You know, and when we're looking at our life, we're looking at progress. It's about out improving, out strategizing, out working. And then the worst part, the hardest part is outlasting. All this stuff is easier, but the most important thing here is outlasting 
your competition, outlasting your own physical and financial fatigue, outlasting times that you think you feel that you are burnt out. Because if your vision is great, your vision is broad, your vision is big, guess what? Nobody's gonna have to worry about sending an alarm clock for you to wake up in the morning. Your purpose, your vision, the reason why you're here. Once you figure out that stuff out, it's a massive thing for you for the rest of life. Because then you chase after it for the rest of your life, man. What they say was old saying, two things, two most important dates in a man's life. Number one, the date that he's born. And the second date is knowing why he was born. And I hope in this endeavor, as you watch our YouTube channel, that you find that. That being said, I love to know your thoughts, your questions, your comments. And if you had done so already, and you haven't picked up my book, Faith Made Millionaire, go to Amazon right now and go pick up yourself a copy. And there's two other videos right here for you to watch your reaction to other celebrities, actors, entertainers, and influencers about money and leadership based on a faith based perspective. That being said, if you haven't done so already and you've gotten value from this video, please consider hitting like. If you watch a couple of our episodes and you still haven't done so yet and you haven't subscribed, please consider hitting subscribe and notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, I'm your money smart guy from Dallas, Texas and until we meet again, continue to smart, continue to smart and be money smart today.